Okay. The aim of this video is to introduce you to the concept of electron delocalization and aromaticity. Okay. Uh, this is really just the basics. It's not meant to to um, be too complicated. Okay. Now, you've met this compound before. This is benzene. And we draw it's a six-membered ring with alternating single and double bonds. Okay. All the carbon atoms in this molecule are sp2 hybridized, which means that they have a p orbital sticking up along every. It's perfectly flat, and there's p orbitals sticking up at every carbon. Okay. And these p orbitals are used to make pi bonds between the adjacent carbon. Now, if I were to ask you uh, what the bond lengths in this were to be, well, you would probably, after thinking about it for a minute, you'd probably say, well, double bond is stronger than a single bond, so the double bonds should be nice and short, whereas the double bonds will be, uh, the single bonds will be a little bit longer. That's not the case, though. Okay. All the bond lengths in this molecule are equivalent. They're all exactly the same. Okay. And that poses a bit of a problem because so far you've only seen um, double bonds, for instance, in fixed positions. Okay. Um, essentially what we've shown you so far is that the electrons have been held in specific bonds and they don't move. Okay. Now, if you were to think about this, what we have here is on each of these carbons we have a p orbital. Okay? And these p orbitals can overlap one another. That's how we're getting our, our pi bonds to begin with. But we've drawn a, a, a double bond between this one, so a pi bond between here and a pi bond between there and a pi bond between there. Okay. But this p orbital doesn't just have to overlap with this p orbital here. This p orbital can overlap with its its neighbour on the other side. Okay. Likewise, this one here doesn't have to bond to this one; it can bond to that one. Okay. So the electrons aren't fixed into these positions. The electrons are free to move around the ring. Okay? And you might have seen uh, structures that look like this. So structures of benzene where we have the six member ring and then we draw a circle in the middle. Okay? That's normally how, how we teach um, school students how to draw these molecules. Okay, but the circle itself actually hints at something that we're seeing here, and that's that the electrons are free to go around and around this ring system. Okay. This is an example of what's known as aromaticity. Okay, the electrons, because this is a, a cyclic system, and because we have we have these alternating single and double bonds. Molecules perfectly flat, the p orbitals overlap, and the electrons can just go round and around and around. Okay, they're not fixed; they're delocalized. Okay. Now, this is what's called, in the specific case when we're talking about rings that are flat, this is called aromaticity. Okay, but we see delocalization in other areas. Okay, so. So here is beta carotene. This is the orange color of carrots. Okay, and here we have again we've got um, a series of alternating uh, double bonds, single bond, double bond, single bond, all the way down the length. Okay, when we see these alternating double and single bonds, that's what we call conjugation. Okay. And as all these uh, carbons 
are sp2 hybridized, then this molecule can be flat and the p orbitals can overlap one another in order to delocalize the electrons across this entire length. Okay, and it's why this is orange. Okay, this is the orange color arises because of this delocalization of the electrons. Okay, so the next thing you're thinking about why your carrots are orange, that's why. Okay, so this is conjugation, that's alternating single and double bonds that allow the, the electrons to be shared amongst the, the atoms all on this, in the conjugated system. Now, chemists introduce a concept that we know as resonance. Okay, now, resonance itself doesn't actually mean anything per se. Okay, resonance is just a tool that chemists use to explain uh, delocalization in terms of pictures. Okay, okay. And I need a double headed arrow. Okay. This is my resonance arrow. And the whole idea of resonance is it allows chemists to show or attempt to show delocalization. Okay. Resonance forms are what what we can consider as contributing structures to the overall one. So here we have uh, our benzene ring. And we can draw it where the double bonds have been moved into a different position. Okay, so these two contributing structures try to explain the localization of benzene. Okay. Now it doesn't have to just be conjugated systems that show delocalization. Okay, and I'm going to show you. Uh, Carbonate. Okay. A carbonate is is this. Okay. And we have we could draw resonance forms of contributing structures to try to explain the bonding in carbonate. Okay. So if we do that, we need a double-headed arrow again. Okay, draw a double-headed arrow. And we can draw... Now this is where I'm going to introduce you to another concept, which is called a curly arrow. Okay, And a curly arrow shows the movement of a pair of electrons. Okay, So we can have a curly arrow from here to here. curly arrow from here to here. Now if we move the electrons into there we can make five bonds of carbon which we can't do and then we can use the curly arrow to move the electrons in this bond up onto that oxygen there. Okay and in so doing we move our electrons around. Okay. So we have another resonance form, another contributing structure. And we can do the same thing. We can move the electrodes from here down to here. Oh, sorry. Move the electrodes from here into here and move the electrodes onto there. So if we do that. Sorry. If we do that, then we get our third and final contributing structure which sorry um, our third and final contributing structure which has uh, the double bond moved round into position like, the, like so Okay, 
So these three structures, these three resonance forms or, or contributing structures, help us explain the bonding in carbonate. Okay. But one thing you should know is that none of these structures are actually the true representation. Okay. If we were able to look at the carbonate itself, essentially the electrons would be distributed around all of the atoms and all the oxygens in this molecule. So that all the oxygens would have a partial negative charge, not having these fixed negative charges over there. Okay. Resonance, and these resonance structures are only for chemists to help them understand delocalization. Okay. Now, delocalization in resonance forms can be used to explain a lot of the reactivity of organic molecules. Okay, so they're an incredibly powerful tool. As I said at the start, this is merely just a, a, a taster of this. You will meet the curly arrows in more detail when we talk about um, organic reaction mechanisms. Um, but what I want you to understand is that electrons in conjugated systems are not necessarily fixed to one position. Okay. The, you can often have overlap of p orbitals which causes them to be able to uh, delocalize the electrons along amongst the, the atoms of that molecule. Okay. So that's a very brief introduction to delocalization and aromaticity.